What's going on, everybody? It's David from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account. You click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. So hit that damn Patreon link, homie. With that being said, we're here today with a review for Don't Breathe 2, all right? So this is the follow-up for the original Don't Breathe, starring Stephen Lang, returning as the blind man, you know, that guy. And then you also have Brandon Sexton, who I believe was in El Camino. He's the main bad guy in this movie. Then you have Madeline Grace, who is the young lady that is living with Stephen Lang. Now, when you're looking at this movie, uh, synopsis-wise, here we go. The blind man found a little girl. He's taking care of her. All of a sudden, these people come and break into his house, and they want the little girl. So don't tell me, oh, man, you're spoiling it. Man, that shit was in the trailer. Don't give me that shit. Anyway, so basically they kidnap the little girl and then the whole movie is Stephen Lang on some freaking uh, Liam Neeson taking shit trying to go get the little girl back. That's basically the whole movie, right? So, what did I think about the movie? Alright, I'm gonna be honest. I like the damn movie. The movie was fun to watch. Very entertaining. Very brutal. Very gory. Shit was fun to watch. But I will say this. That storyline needed some work. The first half of the movie flows so well, it was tight. It kind of gave you the whole, uh, the whole don't breathe vibes from the beginning. You know, we were stuck in the house. The people were in the house. He's trying to pick them off one by one. We had that. The whole first half of the movie takes place inside of a house, and it gives you those vibes. Ooh, man, just you're just getting all of the nice little memories. It's just coming back to you, just coming back to you, just coming back to you, right? And shout out to freaking Madeline Grace. One segment of this movie is focusing on her and her movement throughout the house. And I got to say, man, Madeline Grace was a fun character to watch in the movie. I love that little girl. She's freaking dope. She's brutal. I hope we get to see her if there is more sequels or she get a spinoff or some shit. Madeline's dope. Shout out to Madeline. She did a really good job as Phoenix in this movie. Um, so, like, I mean, the first half of the movie is good. But then you get to the second part. And then the second part is when kind of the story kind of falls apart. This is when we go into the Taken route. This is where we turn into Liam Neeson, right? This part of the movie is where the storyline gets kind of dumb because you ask questions to yourself. You're just like, okay, so this, what are the odds of this happening? You know, that's number one. Number two is like, are you a felon? Are you a soldier? I'm kind of lost. Uh, you know, what else? You have uh, like other aspects of it and you're just like, what are the, like, are, is there really people out there this sick and sadistic that would just, like, it's just, there's certain things about the storyline that just didn't make sense. Like, the whole reasoning behind why they wanted Madeline, or Phoenix, I should say, that's her name in the movie. The whole reason why they wanted Phoenix was, like, one of the most stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Like, you wanted her for this purpose, and it's like, the purpose that you needed it for, the reasoning behind that purpose was even fucking dumber. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, when the dude sat back and was like, yo, you know, if, if she dies, then this goes along with it. And I'm just like, huh? What? What are, you, what are you talking about? Like, that's the reason behind it? Man, dude, you must not know this is America, bro. Like, you could go ahead and find somebody else to do that shit. But I digress. I know people are probably like, what are you talking about? But when you watch the movie, you will definitely see exactly what the hell I'm talking about. I'm keeping it vague as possible. But that was stupid. Um, outside of that, though, I mean, everything else was fun. You know, Mo the, the rest of the movies were really enjoyable. This is one of those movies that you can't go to, you can't watch and take too seriously. If you go into this expecting some dope-ass storyline, bro, you're going to disappoint yourself. And that's the reason why I think uh, this movie is getting such mixed reviews. It's because people are expecting too much. You can't go into this movie and expect, like, the freaking, like, a Quentin Tarantino-esque script. It ain't gonna happen. You're not gonna get that from this movie. You know, you're gonna all you need to do. This is a sit your ass down, watch a damn movie, eat your popcorn, eat your hot dog, drink your drink, eat your candy, and shut the fuck up. This is one of those movies. You know, just sit back and enjoy. You know, when you think too much about it, like it takes away all the fun of it. You know, but this is a very intense movie. You know, and the one thing that I liked about this movie too is the fact that Lang's character in the first movie, was picking off people that were, um, like, they, they weren't, you know, they were just petty criminals, you know, they had no background, they were disadvantaged. This movie, the goons in this movie had 
more of an advantage because they were more trained. So the fights in this, you know, you felt like there was more at stake. You didn't feel like it was so one-sided. That was a pretty dope aspect of it. You know, a lot of this was just this dude just all the sheer will, determination, and love coming through and winning some of these brawls, you know. And some of them were just straight up luck, you know, like my man just got lucky. But I digress. Like I said, um, it's a fun movie to watch, dude. Uh, watching Stephen Lane's character, uh, oh, you know, just going through this movie, being an old man, but still giving people the blues like he's some fake ass Clint Eastwood, you know. But it, like I said, it was fun, dude. It was really fun. It was it's an enjoyable ride. The only movie, the only thing this movie lacks, like I said, is the freaking, that, that storyline. The storyline after the midway point was kind of dumb. I just, I, I, I couldn't really just, I couldn't, it was, it was really dumb. Like, you know, I, that's all I'm going to say. It was dumb. But if it was, this is just, it was just something that they needed in order to get us from point A to point B. We were at point A, we were shuffling along, we're about the midway point, and we just need to get to this point B. So they needed to find something in order to get us safely across this bridge into point b and you know they did that it was kind of rocky it was kind of stupid but you know it was still fun you know um like i said most of the people in this movie did a pretty decent job nobody really stuck out like a sore thumb it wasn't anybody where i was watching and i was like fuck this dude's a terrible actor you know especially from a cast that most of the cast doesn't have really big like they haven't done much to their name you know you have brandon sexton who's done like shit in el camino Who's the El Camino? You have Stephen Lang, who's known for this, and I think Avatar. You know, and everybody else, dude, they have literally nothing else to their name. So kudos to them for picking a small cast, a, a, a kind of unknown cast, and making it work, you know? Um, like I said, dude, fun ride movie. It was dope. Uh, it was it was pretty enjoyable. Now let's go ahead and grade this thing. Uh, here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we grade movies in three ways. Count it three ways. Either you get bodied and sent to the bowels of hell, or you get spared and I tell you the movie's great, it's awesome, terrific, fun, you know, all that good stuff. And then we also have the big fat meh, which is, you know, your movie's Masa Manos, meh, mid-raid, mediocre, mid-range jumper, all that good shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and just give this movie a, I'm going to spare this movie. He ain't earned the death of my hands. God's only man, spared by the butcher. Now I know, I know, I know, I know everybody's like, yo, you just said the movie had a stupid ass plot uh, and all that other stuff. Yeah, dude, it did. You know, it had a really stupid plot. But at the same time, it's like, I don't expect much from this movie. This movie is just one of the movies where you just got to go, sit your ass down, watch the movie, you know? You just go and enjoy yourself. You can't think too much about it, uh, you know, or else it's going to bother you, you know? Um, now that I think I really need to go watch Don't Breathe 1 again, because I really felt as if at the end of Don't Breathe 1 that it was going to pick up right after that and kind of go that route, maybe follow the main character from Don't Breathe 1 again. But, you know, I can't, I don't know, I have to rewatch it in order to really just refresh my memory about that movie. Because it felt kind of weird, like, picking up in a new place uh, with a new cast and a whole new team. And just, it just was kind of weird. But at the same time, like I said, it worked because there's certain characters in this movie that were better equipped for handling, you know, Lang's character. So, that's pretty cool. Um, so, that's my review. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below, and you are now exiting the cinema chop chop. I hope you guys are having a magnificent day. Adios, homies.